just go to your browser, type Swiss admin. The word admin comes from absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Every drugs we take undergoes these four phases. These four phases. When you, for example, when you take it orally, you take paracetamol orally, then not orally, it has to be it has to be absorbed. It must be absorbed from your intestine, right? When it is absorbed, it has to be distributed to the site of action. For example, you know, I don't know if you've ever asked yourself, I'm having a headache and I take paracetamol, and before you know anything, the headache does vanish. What happens there is after you've taken a telanol, it gets into your intestine, it is absorbed from your intestine and distributed to the brain. If it is not distributed, the headache will still persist. So now, after it has been distributed, you ask yourself, okay, is this drug going to be in my body forever? Not at all. It will be metabolized by the liver. And when it's metabolized by the liver, if it accumulates in the system, it can be toxic. Therefore, it must be excreted. And that is the word letter E, excretion. So every drug comes from absorption, from after you take it orally, absorption, distribution in the body, metabolism by the liver, and excretion out of the body. You understand? So that's why many people, when they do drug tests, they take their urine because their urine tests a lot. That is the that is the way of excretion. You understand? So how do you how do you now how do you get a drug? If a drug is going to be, if a drug, how do you how do if you are designing a drug now, and you want to how do you predict if your if your drug how do you predict the admin property? We call it pharmacokinetic property or admin property. Admin A D M E properties. You understand? So this server is a, is an AI machine learning based server that has been put together to predict the admin property, pharmacokinetic property of a particular drug. So someone suggests a drug for us. Now, for you to do that on this platform, on this, you can, you can copy the canonical smile. And I told you, you can get canonical smile of the drug from any of the database we've talked about, in the, we, we just talked about. Pop came, anywhere you can get it. Better still, you may want to draw your structure if you have the time. If you want to draw, okay, let's draw this now. Let's put this. Let's say this is a, let's say we are working on this drug in our lab. This drug is going to work for Kobe. Let's 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 try and let's try and do something. Okay, and let's assume this is another drug. Let's assume this. Is, so I, I believe you can see I'm doing this. So can you see? Let's assume I'm just putting let's let's just do something for the purpose of the study. So now let's assume this is a this is a drug. Now we discover this drug. This drug actually is going to kill COVID. As we know we've done, we've made that experimentally or computer-based methods. Now we have the next thing of concern is is this drug good? Is it going to be safe? How is this drug going to be absorbed in the body? When people take it, how is it going to be metabolized? So we have to have knowledge of the pharmacokinetic properties of this particular drug. So once I've done this, I've, you know, we already have the diagram here. Click on this red and it will automatically spot the canonical smile. This is the canonical smile of this, of this diagram. So let's call it, let's call it, Let's call it drug B, for example. Can someone suggest another drug for us? So metformin. Metformin. So let's go to let's go to pop chem and get metformin. Let's go and get canonical smell of metformin. Pop chem. 
Thank you, Zipok, and can a customer of Met for me. So let's get Met for me. So the canonical smile is what you need there. So this is good there. Met for me. So let's go and get the canonical smile of Met for me. This is the canonical smile of Met for me. So now imagine you want to get this canonical smile of Met for me, and Met for me is not on. Okay. What will you do? You try other database. You understand? That is the purpose of me showing you different database. Now, so let's try, let's, let's paste it here, met for me, let's call it met. Right. So on this platform, you can put as many, as many smiles that you want to put. Just put it there and give it their respective name. So come down and click on the, on this red button, run. And give it time. Can you see it's running? Now. So this is the predicted pharmacokinetic property of this of drug A. Can you see? Can you see my screen? This is drug A, right? This is our met for me. Now you will be asking yourself, what is what is this? I'm telling you, any drug that you want to you want to sell on market in US. If you do not provide, even if that drug can cure COVID instant immediately, it will stop people from dying. And you are not providing FDA information about the pharmacokinetic property, they are not going to approve that drug for sale in US. Because whatever drug you are bringing on must be must you must be that must be information about the safetyness of that drug. And when if you come here, this is drug A. Don't forget the drug A that we. The, the one we just formed. Now look at this is the structure we just we, we, we formed, right? This is the smile. This is the molecular formula. It gives the molecular formula. That those are the, the chemical properties. This is the molecular weight. This is the molecular number of every atom. Number of aromatic heavy atoms. Fraction CSP. Number of potable bonds. Hydrogen bond acceptors number of hydrogen bond donor so i want to give you our first assignment please let me put it our first assignment are you listening i want you to go and i want you to i want you guys to read what is lipinski rules lipinski lipinski rules let me put this here lipinski Lipinski, I'm sure they or anybody in pharmacy will have come in contact with that Lipinski rule of five. Please, I want you guys to read about that and get back to me. That will be my first question to what is the what is the Lipinski rule? And you should be able to put something down. Now, when you are this when are, you are designing a drug, you must have information about this thing. Now, the next thing is lipophilicity. Lipophilicity is talking about the solubility of your drug in the lipid, in the lipid environment. In drug design, people in pharma, pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics, for a drug to be highly absorbed in the system, it must have it must be soluble in lipid. It must be soluble in lipid. I'm telling you. Why? Because our body, our, the, the human body, the human cell is made up of lipid environment. So if you want to take a drug and you want the drug to get into the system, perform its therapeutic effect, it must be soluble in lipid. So therefore, in drug discovery, people are concerned about the solubility of your drug in lipid environment. And if you look at this, as far as this drug we are looking at is concerned, are you getting me? This, 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 this lipophilicity is, is measured in what is called log p value. Log p value. The log p value of this drug ranges from 2.8 to 3.56, 3.84 rather. If you look at this, the first one is log p, right? 
it is calculated based on an AI algorithm. This other one, the second one also was being calculated by this person, you no, know, using another algorithm. So they are so they are different, they have about five, five ways that log P was calculated using different AI algorithm. Are you getting me? So now the last one is called consensus log P. Consensus in the sense that it adds all these values, the five of them together. And find the average. That's why it's coming. It's named as consensus. It's an average. Can you see? Average of all five predictions. So different people develop their own AI algorithm. You can do your own. By the time we get to that, and calculate log and level felicity, and at the end of it, you are able to say, okay, let's come to an agreement, a, a consensus. Let's calculate the average of everything, and this is the value. So, one of the assignments I'm giving to you is from the Lipinski rules of five. I ask you to work, to work on read more, read on the Lipinski rule, and tell me the expected value. What Lipinski rule is saying for a drug, for a potential, for a drug, what is the accepted? log p value it will tell you the accepted log p value the accepted num hydrogen number of hydrogen bond acceptor hydrogen bond donor i want you to know that so by the time we read the lipase 2 rule it, it will give you the information about the value so there is a value that is expected for a drug that want to be sold that want needs to i want to be soluble so in lipid there is a value that is expected of I want you to read about that next week, then I will give you more information on that. So the next thing is solubility in water. If a drug is soluble in water, the availability and absorption will be great. And do you guys wonder why some drugs are not taken orally? They will say, no, don't take this drug orally. It has to be by injection. Because if they are administered orally, those drugs are not soluble in water and mostly not soluble in lipid. Therefore, the availability in the body will be low. But availability is a measurement of what is the amount of drug taken orally or any to any means, and what is the amount that is present at the site of action. For example, if you take 10 milligrams of a particular drug. Maybe prastamol, for example, 500, prastamol usually comes in 250, 500 milligrams. If you take 500 milligrams of prastamol, a telanol, orally, and they go, they take, after some hour, they take the, the, the blood sample of that person. What is the amount of telanol present in the blood compared to the amount present in the, in the uh, uh, compared to the amount that was given? And if you remember at that time, I think it was under pop chem. It says the availability of telanol is 88%. What that means is if you give someone 100 milligrams of telanol, 88 milligrams will be present in the, in the blood. The remaining part of it will have been excreted. So it is a concern for people that design drugs that the availability of a drug must be high. The amount that will be present in the blood should not be should not be should not be too low to the amount that was given orally. So there are some drugs that if you give 100 milligram orally, hardly we use it 10 milligram in the blood because by the time it passes through absorption and the rest, many of them has been lost along the way, and that is why some drugs were preferred to be given to injection. Because by giving injection, it will increase the bioavailability instead of it passing through the lung, through the mouth, the intestine, and the rest. So, solubility in water and lipid is so good for any drugs that anybody wants to, when you are designing a drug. And if you look at this value, can you see there are three different algorithms used on this, on this uh, website to calculate 
by availability. The first one says this block is soluble. Can you see? It says soluble. Another one, let's look at the other one. The other one says soluble. This one says soluble. So definitely this block is going to be soluble in water. From experience, anytime I buy a chemical in the lab and I want to dissolve that chemical, I'm content. Is it I should let dissolve it in water solvent or any other, any other type of solvent? What I used to do is let I put those canonical smell of that compound of that drug in this software. And if this if the software says if the three of them says not soluble, not soluble, not soluble, I'm not going to dissolve it in water. But if it says soluble, 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 then I'm going to dissolve it in water. So it gives you something about solubility. Next thing is the pharmacokinetic properties. Now, if you look at the first one, this is GI absorption, gastrointestinal absorption. GI absorption, gastrointestinal absorption. It says the absorption of this drug is good, to, is low. So if it is low, definitely it will not be advisable to take this drug orally. It won't be nice. Or if you take it orally, the amount that we get to the system will not be much. It says low. Now, the next one is called blood brain barrier. It might have come if you have heard about the word blood brain barrier. The way our brain is being made, our brain is is a sacred organ. Let me use it that way. Which means chemicals cannot just get to the brain anyhow. I'm telling you. The way you take things in your mouth, things cannot get to the brain like that. Whatever that comes to the brain must come to the blood. And for that to happen, and for not for the for in order not to let any drugs, any substance to get to the brain, there are some barriers that stand in between the brain and the blood. And the purpose of those gates is to, is to screen whatsoever compound that want to get to the brain. Because if any toxic compound gets to the brain, there's going to be a problem. So that's why they call it blood-brain barrier. They are like, an, like, a, like a security guard, yes, that is maintaining the movement of substance from the blood into the brain, from the brain back into the blood. So from this, this shows that our drug says yes. This software believes that our drug can pass through the blood barrier. Are you getting me? So it shows our blood can pass through the blood brain barrier. And that is why some drugs in market, especially for neuro, neurogenetic drugs, that is why it is difficult to treat many, many diseases such as azemia and some other brain diseases. Because even if the drug work in the lab, is the drug, are they, are, will they be able to permit the blood brain barrier? You understand? So that is a concern. So the next thing is what is called glycoprotein substrate. It's called PGP, glycoprotein. glycoprotein is a protein in the body that are involved in drug metabolism. Are you getting me? They are involved in drug metabolism and they are called efflux pump. Efflux pump. They are part of, they are part of the, the security that guide the blood brain barrier. So if a, if, a, if a drug is a substrate of that pig glycoprotein, it will send it out of the system. And you can see it says no. That means the blood, the pig glycoprotein does not metabolize this drug. And that is why it is easier for this drug to get into the brain. Not only big glycoprotein, there are also some other, other, other form of gate. And that thing is the, I don't know if I'm saying you might have heard of the cytochrome P450 system before, or cytochrome P450 complex. It is the cytochrome P450 or cy. They are the drug metabolizing enzymes. These are the enzymes that metabolize, I can say 90% of every drug that we take in, that we, that we, that we take into our, into, our, into our body. And they are present majorly in the liver 
and some other part of the body. So they metabolize every drugs because if the drugs you are taking are not metabolized and they are in the body the way you take them in, they will be toxic. They will be they, they are they are they are going to be poison to the body. So these enzymes metabolizes those drugs. Are you getting me? So and there are different type of them, and I will maybe I should give another another assignment that you guys should read more about the step two. The COVID four fifty drugs and enzyme enzyme. Just um, they are not submitting it, but I just want you to have an idea of them. I like, don't ask you to submit. Don't submit. Just submit, and by the time we come next in, in our next lecture, we just give we just talk generally about them. So okay. quick question. So is it just a general understanding of the SIPs or a specific cytochrome P4 P uh, cytochrome P450 you want us to look at? In just a general understanding of them. Okay. Okay, thank you. you. Know, the SIP is a super family, about 40, 50 of them. But the ones if okay, read generally about them and focus more on CYP 3A4. The CYP 3A4 metabolizes about 70% about of drugs we take. This CYP 3A4. So they are drug metabolizing. So all these things I'm telling you, they are by the time we do to do your drug discovery semester, they are very important that you have understanding of their you have the understanding of their effect on your drugs. So now the next one is talking about drug likeness. This is the Lipinski. Now so it, the last one is log KP. It talks about the skin permeability. Are they, is it able to permit the skin? Is it also give you that information? Now, this is the Lipinski rule. Like I said, the Lipinski rule, Lipinski rule is a rule of five. It's a rule of five. You understand? And for a, a drug must the drug must be able to pass four out of five of the rules. And if you look at our drug, it says yes, no violation. That means out of the five rules of the Pinsky, our drug has everything. There is no violation. However, let me stand, you know, there are many drugs in the market that do not pass the Pinsky rule. They are, in, they are on the market. You understand? So the pain skill is the name of a person. So anybody too can you can decide and say, okay, my own is Johnson's rule, Tammy's rule, um, Stevenis rule tomorrow. And just and so apart from the pain skill, you can see this another rule, goose rule. This is Weber, Egan, Mwedge, and the rest. So the next thing is bioavailability score. Can you see? Of the availability of these drugs is, is 55%. 55%. What that means is if you take 100 milligram of this drug orally, are you getting me? 55% of it will get to the system. Imagine. If you take it, if you take 50, 100, 100 milligram, just 55 milligrams, which is 55% of it, we get into the system. Another thing is telling us here is talking about is there any adverse adverse molecule, any toxic toxicity effect of this molecule? It says no, no, no. I believe that you are saying you are, you are getting this. So it Synthetic accessibility for people that want to synthesize also gives information. That is the that is the compound with the structure we form. So I want to let's go to metformin, which is a drug that is already in the market. Now, who is which is already in the market? This is the structure of metformin. This is the canonical smile, right? This is the found properties, this and um, formula and the rest. Can you see the lipophilicity? It's low. As the current level is minus 0.89. Solubility says it is highly soluble in water. Because it has good lipophilicity and is soluble in water, that is why metformin is taken orally. Can you see that now? If it is not soluble in water and it is not, I'm telling you, nobody they won't recommend metformin to be taken orally. It would have been taken through injection. And look at the absorption too. That means 
can, if you take it after you have taken it orally, it has a very high absorption in the intestine, which is a good attribute of a drug that can be taken orally. Can you see that? It does not permit the blood, it can't permit the blood being buyer, probably because of the structure or any other reason. It's not a source, it's not a source of glycoprotein and does not inhibit any of these drug metabolizing enzymes. Can you see? The skin ability is minus 7.99. Now, can you see? Lipinski, it also passed the Lipinski rule, no adverse effects. Do you see that? And there is no, but this, this guy is saying something that there is, the immune structure of it can, be, can make it to be toxic. Can you see? So this, all this information gives you a lot of info. It gives you an idea of the nature, the physical chemical properties and pharmacokinetic properties of your drug. Are you getting me now? So now, we've looked about it now. Let's go and look about what is the effect of these drugs on what is the hepatotoxicity? Is it talking to the liver, to the, to the kidney? Is it, can it be carcinogenic? Can it, can it cause cancer? You know, all this information you, you need to get, you, know, you need to understand them by the time you design a drug. And to do that, let's go to a, a, a AI algorithm called Oxpin. Ox. This is not the one I use. Yes. Just give me one second to come. Any question before we go further? Does anybody have question? Any question? Anybody with any question so far with what you've done so far? I believe you, you are you following, I believe you are following what I'm what what you have been you have been saying. Okay, that's great. All right. So let's go to now. What you want to do, this server is to predict the toxicity of our drugs. You understand? How toxic are they? Do they affect the liver, the kidney? Because all this information is very important when you are designing it, when you are designing drugs. So to do that, let's come to tox prediction. This tox prediction is you know, we the time we you appreciate why I took time to, to show you different drug libraries. Now Let's use, we are going to use our med for me in this case. Now, when you want to, there are two ways, there are two very different ways. You can, you can, if you are connected to the internet, you can put your chemical compound, your, the name of the compound, you can say met for me, right? And click search. Can you see? Because you are connected to the internet, it automatically imports the structure of MET for me. Can you see that? Another way you can do is you can go and if you're not on the internet, you can go and you can you can input the canonical smile of your drug, as you can see here. If I should click, if I should click smile, it doesn't really easy. It it convert it convert the smile to this structure. So, and better still, you can also draw on this platform if you want to draw the structure. You can as well draw the structure. Now, let's go back to Met for me. Let's use Met for me. Sorry. So, Met for me. Now, the next thing now is we want to see how toxic this compound is, this drug, or any drug you are working with. How toxic is it? 
we can look at organ toxicity. Okay, is it toxic against my familiar with a lot of us when we see EPA? EPA is talking about liver. Is it toxic against the liver? If you want to look at that, you can click, you, you, you take that. Okay, is it carcinogenic? Can this drug call, can it be, can it cause cancer? You can check it. Is it immunotoxic? Is it up to the immune system? Is it up to the immune system? You, you, you can do that also. Is it, is it, is it, is it mutagenic also? Can it cause mutation? Maybe, you know, we might, we might have had a lot of drugs that they will say pregnant woman should not take it. Because if pregnant woman take it, it can cause mutation, best defect to the fetus. Okay, is it toxic? Is it talking to the cell of the, any cell of the body? If you want to check that, you can check it. If you want to look at some signaling pathways, like the hydrocarbon receptor pathway, you want to see, okay, does it have any effect? And the gene receptor, Receptor ligand binding domain is it is it does it interact with ligand and uh, uh, ligand binding domain? You can do that. Does it affect some aromatase? The aromatase are basic, most of them are they are the drug metabolizing enzyme, the site 3A4. Is it can it also affect the estrogen receptor? So you can choose as it's not necessary you take everything. If your study does not involve taking everything, you don't take them. Just choose the one that your study, your study takes. But well, in this case, I want let I want to take all. Let me just take all. Now, do you see that? So once you've clicked that, this is start prediction. You automatically start. You start to predict and to give you your result. Do we get that? Hello. Yes. Okay, that's great. So I think some of our result is ready now. Can you see this now? This is the structure. The first thing it did for us is the AD. That's letter dose. Letter dose is the dose at which you take a, a, a drug or a compound and to be it will be poisonous or toxic to your body. So this one, it says 680 milligram, 80 milligram per kilogram. And it says class four. For us to be able to know what class four means, let, let me show you, let, let me do something. Let me, let me show you the classification. It will show you the classification. I'm coming in. Let me see. So I'm coming to talk. I'm also that we're able to appreciate that. Good talks to rise. Okay. Now look at if look if you look at this, the toxic doses and city class. If the LD50 is Less than five. That means there is good. That means that compound, the compound, the drug is is very is very poisonous. I mean, it says fatal, fatal if swallowed. So if it is less than fifty, if it is anything less than fifty, it is fatal if swallowed. That's class two. Toxic if swallowed it can still be dangerous if it is less than fifty. Less if the LD fifty is less than. 300. Half swallow, it is less than 30,000, rather. So you can see maybe amphu swallow, it means the ADL, if the LD, LD value is less than 5,000, between 2,000 and 5,000, and not toxic if it is above 5,000. So our drug, the metformin is in class four, right? Can you see class four? So which means it can be toxic. That's why it has to be, you know, there is moderation in when you are taking it. So that's fine. So can you see this one to also give us the molecular weight, the hydrogen donor acceptor like we have in the previous? Can you see this in always 
more because it is important in predicting growth. That's why it always come up in every condition that you see. Now, the average similarity is 49.12 and the rest. Now, this is talking about the distribution, the system. Can you see? So it gives you some other info. Now, this is where we are going, our prediction now. It says, uh, now, the first one against the liver. Is it toxic? Is it toxic to the liver? It says inactive. So if using at that dosage, it is not toxic to the liver. But at a very high dosage, it can be. But at that average dosage, it is not toxic. Is it carcinogenic? It says no. No carcinogenic. Is it immunotoxic? No. Inactive? No. It's not immunogenic. Is it mutagenic? It says inactive. That's no. It's not endotoxic. And it does not affect all this pathway. As you can see, inactive, 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 inactive. Can you see that? So that is the info. That is the information this gives to you. So it gives you idea even before you go to the lab. You can have idea of what you can have idea of information about your drug. I'm telling you, if you put some drugs here, it will tell you they are toxic, they are dangerous. It will give you that information. You understand what I'm saying? So that's that's what this does. And this is not limited to this server alone. There are a lot of server. There are a lot of Diff because everybody develops their own algorithm based on their knowledge and on their understanding. So there are a lot of them. But these ones are the ones that have, have you know that are frequently used and mostly are accepted in publications. That's why I am I'm, I'm showing us this, this particular one. Do we have any 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 questions so far? Any questions so far? Any questions from anybody? Any question? <laughs>